worst health crisis in American history was the American Civil War, 150 years ago, 1861 to 1865. Hello, my name is Robert Hicks. I'm director of the Mütter Museum and Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. And welcome to this series called Broken Bodies, Suffering Spirits, Injury, Death, and Healing in Civil War Philadelphia. It's appropriate that I begin here because I'm standing in the Union League of Philadelphia. The Union League was formed by some civic-minded men to help this president prosecute the war effort, which he did successfully. In order to do that, it's not just armies beating the foe on the battlefield, but it's the home front, raising money, administering the war effort. And Philadelphia was a hub of transportation. It was the arsenal of the Union. It was a manufacturing center, and of course, many troops were recruited, trained here, and then sent off to the front lines. In this opening episode, we look at the medical world from the point of view of one of America's foremost men of letters, Walt Whitman, who voluntarily entered the hospital and shared the misery in order to help the wounded and the sick. Let's go visit. Camden, New Jersey. We're a short distance from Philadelphia. In fact, this way is the Delaware River. We can see Philadelphia from here. The reason we're in Camden is because of this house. This is Walt Whitman House. It is today a museum, but it's where Walt Whitman spent about the last decade of his life. In fact, it's the only house he ever owned. You can imagine Whitman sitting by the upstairs windows. His bedroom was right up here or in the parlor right here. He liked to look out, look at the life of the city and talk to the passers-by. After the war, Whitman delivered a very popular and acclaimed speech on the death of Abraham Lincoln, a remembrance. There's an admission ticket to one of Whitman's lectures that's on display inside the house. Now, Whitman had kept notes about his hospital experiences during the war, and when he was in Camden, he looked at those notes for the first time since the war, and he combined them and published them in a book called Memoranda on the War. And he recorded his vignettes of hospital experiences, specific remembrances of soldiers that he had gotten to know, some of whom did not survive, and in some cases, the only trace these people leave in the historical record are the thoughts that Whitman put down in this book. Uh, when I came here, I, I brought all my notes from the, my days in the hospital, and I decided to put them together and publish them. One of the reasons that I, that I wanted to collect my notes and think about my hospital days experiences back in the 60s was uh, because the real war will never get in the books. And my particular war, I visited battlefields. I never actually witnessed a battle. In fact, I've been taken to task for not serving as a soldier. But I don't think I would have been a good soldier, and I do think that I was a, a very good hospital visitor. One morning I stepped out of the tent and witnessed three corpses lying, preparing for removal and burial, wrapped in blankets. And based on my notes at the time, I wrote this poem. A sight in camp, in the daybreak gray and dim. A sight in camp, in the day break gray and dim, as from my tent I emerge so early sleepless, as slow I walk in the cool fresh air, the path nearby the hospital tent. Three forms I see on stretchers lying, brought out there, untended, lying. Over each the blanket spread, ample brownish woolen blanket, gray and heavy blanket, folding, covering all. Curious, I halt and silent stand, and then with light fingers, I from the face of the nearest, the first just lift the blanket. Who are you, elderly man, so gaunt and grim, with well-grayed hair and flesh all sunken about the eyes? Who are you, my dear comrade? Then to the second I step, and who are you, my child and darling? Who are you, sweet boy, with cheeks yet blooming? And then to the third, a face not child nor old, very calm, as of beautiful yellow-white ivory. Young man, I think I know you. 
I think this face is the face of Christ himself, dead and divine and brother of all, and here again he lies. Opening lines from Leaves of Grass. I celebrate myself, and what I assume, you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. Famous first lines. This is a facsimile of the first edition of 1855 of Leaves of Grass, the compilation of poems that put Walt Whitman on the literary map. And throughout his life, he continued to add to this as he revised these poems and added more. And after the Civil War, there were additional poems directly influenced by his Civil War experience. Now we are at the mausoleum of Walt Whitman and his family. Walt Whitman is buried within, his brother George buried next to him. Whitman's parents are also in there. And this site is a nice bucolic little niche in a larger cemetery. Nice little walkway, angles by, and in fact strewn about this area are gifts from many visitors. You can see some of them in the doorway. There's a toy bear with a little pile of stones, other mementos from well-wishers and admirers of Walt Whitman, people who want to honor his memory. Now, later on in Whitman's life, he added to and expanded Leaves of Grass. And of course, his later poems that deal with the war experience are all there. And among the most famous are O Captain, My Captain, which meditates on the death of Abraham Lincoln as leader of the nation. Another one, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, is one written that captures the assassination of Lincoln with images of the onset of spring. And that poem particularly has a very direct relation to the notes and memoranda that Whitman kept on his hospital experiences. For example, one of those notes records that Whitman was going about his hospital duties about the time he heard that Lincoln was assassinated. And for some reason, the strong smell of fresh blooming lilacs was in his nostrils. And he records that for no particular reason, from that point on, he made an association with the smell of lilacs and the death of Lincoln. And therefore, it was the inspiration for the poem. Now it probably says an awful lot about Whitman. There's an image of him in the book, opposite the title page. And the title page image shows him in a very casual posture when you think that authors of this time represented themselves as formal portraits in ties and waistcoats and frock coats. Whitman's is very casual, almost very L.L. Bean as we might look at it today. And it says something about his character. He meets people on equal terms. He is not the superior poet looking down from the heavens. He's one of us and he writes about us and he writes about our experiences and he reaches out his hand and shakes it heartily and says, we are both cut of the same cloth. <laughs> 